KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Marion Barnett Jr., your hostess, hosting this morning. Um, Marion Sr. is out on vacation, so let's keep keep him in your prayers. Uh, we got a lot of talk to talk about this morning. This is almost the one month anniversary after uh, the Trayvon Martin decision, and I'm gonna have a guest in this morning uh, who's uh, coming in just to kind of talk to us about. Some of the opinions in the public, um, and I want to get your call and comment this morning uh, on how you're feeling about the one month, almost one month anniversary after the decision. I know I've talked to plenty of people who changed their minds, who feel differently, especially, uh, you know, having some time to think. Uh, call and come. Call and comment this morning about how you're feeling this morning. That number is 972 647 1893. I want to say good morning to my guest this morning. My guest is Ryan McCray. Good morning, Ryan. Morning, morning. What's going on, man? Good, good, good. Uh, Ryan, tell us what you do for a living. Uh, I'm a uh, CPS investigator for the state. I investigate child abuse, child molestation, uh, uh, physical abuse, neglect things of that nature so okay. i'm out in the community all the time all the time okay good good uh tell us a little bit of how you feel about the uh, after one month you being what from florida correct yeah i'm from uh uh daytona beach florida okay you being near that area and from that area tell us how you feel one month after the uh decision well i mean of course it's a tragedy you know uh but i feel like you know uh I hear a lot of people talking about, you know, retaliation and stuff like that, you know, especially with him being in Texas, supposedly. So um, I feel like, you know, the, the, the people should come together as a community and, uh, you know, as a people, as, as an African-American people, to be honest with you, and, uh, you know, just come together and, and try to prevent this from, from happening next time, you know, by education, uh, education uh, in the community and education in the home. Okay. Well, I don't want to dig into it too deep. Uh, again, we're up against a pledge drive uh, right now, so make sure you guys are calling in and giving your tax-deductible pledge. I know in uh, 2012, they KNN lost nine shows, so don't let this show be the next one to go. All right, so make sure you call in and keep Mary and Barnett Senior Church information in open, open form going and that number is 972-647-1893 knon.org you can go online and look at uh the tally also you have three months to pay, to pay your pledge uh, it's the easiest part of calling uh you don't have to pay right now you can just call and let us know how much you want to donate and you can uh get on the payment plan and pay that out i know school is coming up and a lot of you are preparing for uh supplies backpacks things of that nature for your children or nephews nieces things of that nature don't worry you don't have to pay your tax deductible pledge right now and remember it is tax deductible okay so uh make sure you're calling in to pay that tax deductible pledge uh again like i say i, I want to do a focus point on uh, the one month decision after Trayvon Martin. But if you have something you want to talk about, something that's on your mind, feel free to call in at 972-647-1893. I'd love to hear from you, love to talk to you. Uh, I'll be talking to Ryan McCray this morning, a gentleman that works with Child Protective Services, the state, and kind of getting his views on certain situations going on with our youth. Uh, it's very important that we 
stay on top of our youth and making sure that they're aware right. of the dangers that are out there uh, because half of the battle is knowing and we want to make sure that everyone is aware of what what dangers are out there from a CPS standpoint right. you know we uh, we as parents have our own theory and how we do certain things but there are laws that uh, that we that actually govern us right. and that we have to abide by um, so we're gonna dip dip into that a little bit this morning um, give you a little history fact this morning on uh, August 10th on August the 10th in African American history uh, Colin Powell Colin Powell was uh, nominated chairman joint chief of staff in 1989 August 10th all right just just a little history fact this morning I'm gonna try to give out a little history facts here and there so for this week of uh, August 3rd through August the 10th uh, just so we make sure we are aware of our african-american history um, Ryan if you could uh, give us some of the things that you see it working for a child protective services or things that you've been forewarned on and things that you look for when you're dealing with uh, children that may not want to be taken from their home but the 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 circumstances uh, allow for them to be maybe put into a foster home or mm -hmm. adopt <clears throat> well I see a lot of uh, neglect um, um, recently you know um, with me being out I see a lot of especially homes that don't have fathers in them you know that's one big one big issue um i just see a lot of uh there's no knowledge about you know how to be a parent you know a lot of people having children but don't really understand how to you know how to raise their kids and, and i see a lot of just a lot of neglect you know just a lot of not knowing what to do you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um but a lot of that you know has a lot to do with you know two-parent homes I, I, I see a lot of you know, mothers with three or four kids and stuff like that. Single um, moms. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, but you know, a lot of that is on is on us. You know, is on men. You know, um, uh, just trying to come together and just be fathers in the home, and that's really, honestly, the the, the big thing I see a lot in the community about uh, where I am. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, do you have you ever been put in a situation where there was a two parent home and uh, what are the statistics on uh, two parent homes as far as the child being neglected? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I do see a lot of two parent homes, you know, uh, not together, not doing what they need to do. But a lot of that has to do with other factors. You know, um, there's some, you know, homes that, you know, on, has drug use and alcohol mm -hmm. use, um, you know, just neglecting that nature. So I do see a lot of that. Okay. So what are the steps of uh, Child Protective Services, I guess, representative to come out and let's say they see some certain things going on? Uh, what are the steps? Is there a guideline that you all have to follow before you can mm -hmm. say, hey, this kid can't be put in this situation or does it have to be uh, severe or does mm -hmm. it have to be something mediocre? No, it doesn't have to be severe. I mean, if, if anybody, you know, calls with a situation, we got to, you know, react i mean it doesn't have to be that severe but you know uh somebody can call and say you know uh my kid i've seen this kid his parent beat him in the store you know what i'm saying do we you know depending on how severe it is then you know we'll go out um but it doesn't have to be major major you know nothing like that uh we'll go investigate any situation you know um as long as it's conducive to do so now what does a does a Whoop when the child is getting whooping with a belt on his rear end. Mm. Uh, I know certain laws have changed, and mm. many feel like that's abuse. Is right. that considered abuse uh, from a child uh, no. CPS standpoint? No, it's it's just about being excessive with it. You know, it's okay to you know spank your kids, or whatever, um, but just don't be excessive and you know do it over and over and over and over again. You know. Um, at that point, you know, it goes beyond discipline, then, you know, then it, then it goes to abuse. So you don't want to, uh, you know, keep doing excessively, you know, excessively. If, it, if, that, if that doesn't work, then there has to be other avenues that you go to besides, you know, the physical, you know. 
So, I mean, there's always other alternatives. You can sit down and talk, counseling, you know, um, family meetings, things of that nature. So, um, you don't have to be excessive with it, you know, all the time. Sometimes it doesn't work, you know, so. Okay. All right. Good, 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 good. Again, I have uh, Ryan McCray from uh, Child Protective Services joining me this morning. And he caught us in the, uh, the middle of a... Uh, uh, a tax deductible pledge drive so make sure you guys are uh, listening calling in giving your tax deductible pledge drive if you want Mary and Barnett send you to remain church info church information in the open forum to remain on KNON you got to make your tax deductible pledge drive and uh, you can call it in you can go online uh, the the online website is knon.org uh, to my understanding they have a certain amount you got to reach uh, so make sure you go in there and check it out. You can call in and make that tax deductible player drive at 972-647-1893. Uh, there were about nine shows that were taken in 2012. Don't let this be one of them in 13. Uh, the, it, it, the money doesn't go directly towards us. It helps the station, keeps your voice out there. All right. This is one of the only shows in the uh, DFW area where you can call in, where you, can, where you have a voice, where you can make your opinion make your opinion known all right uh where we can huddle up and do things to help our community uh so make sure you're calling in giving that tax deductible place also call in and give us your call and comment yeah give us your call and comment i would love to hear from you again this is uh almost the one month anniversary of the uh george zimmerman decision uh being acquitted and i also have a uh, good friend of mine Brian McCray in from Child Protective Services talking to him Rude. getting his opinion uh, seeing what we can do to help our youth in going forward all right, all right. Uh, we're up against a short break uh, we're up against a short break so uh, okay all right good thank you okay good I thought you said a break all right but so go ahead and make sure you call in. Give us your tax deductible pledge and call in and uh, give your call and comment, all right? Um, so uh, Again, this is the, well, not quite, but in four days, it'll be the one-month anniversary of the Trayvon Martin decision. I know I'm, my stance on it still has not changed. I'm still feeling the same way I felt about a month ago, uh, although I did prepare for it because you can kind of see the writing on the wall. Uh, uh, there was a lot that went on that was, they say, not documented, you know. Um, you have a woman in Florida right now that's locked up for giving a warning shot, gave her 20 years. Mm. However, you have a man who didn't give a warning shot, actually killed him, that was acquitted. Mm. And my my stands on it, and I, I probably won't change, that um, I know George Zimmerman uh, profile. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I do feel like it was racially motivated. Uh, it's one of those things that we see all, we see all the time as African American men. However, when it's done our youth, and uh, not that it's ever right, but when it's done our youth, and somebody get away as as Mr. Zimmerman did, it's one of those things that it hurt, it cut deep. And I think our youth get op got an opportunity. I know my kids got an opportunity to see uh, how the justice system works mm -hmm. from an African American standpoint. And some some people feel like, hey, this, this, the system will work for us. Some people feel like it won't. Right. Uh, there has been an increase in uh, buying guns since that decision. Right. You know, people are trying to protect themselves. Well, uh, well, well uh, I mean, like I said, I, I think it, it's just a time for, you know, just to educate, uh, you know, just to uh, teach our youth. Uh, not necessarily about this particular trial, but just about you know the justice system in general, whether you feel it's right or wrong. Um, you know, uh, I think right now it really is a, a teaching education moment. Uh, a lot of people are upset, you know, which is understandable. But you know, I think it really is time to digress and really think about what's going on, whether you was for him or not, whether you was for him or for Travion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm not really taking you know taking any side. 
a, a spectrum right now, but uh, I think it's really time for education time. You know, community time. Mm-hmm. A lot of church churches should should come together and you know just sit down and talk about it. You know, let's take the anger and feelings out of it. Let's mm-hmm. really talk about how we can help this situation uh, from happening again. However, you feel about it. So right. Now I know there was a, a couple of rallies that took place maybe a week after the decision mm-hmm. was made. Uh, a couple here in Dallas, forward there. I went to one of them, and I, and I could be honest. Uh, I wasn't too pleased with the turnout. Uh, I wasn't too pleased with the turnout. I didn't get that ten thousand man march that I thought I was going to see, mm-hmm. and maybe it was because it was. A, a lack of preparation or short notice. It was trying to be one week after the decision, things of that nature. Uh, but I was I was fairly disappointed because I felt like it was out there enough for many to know about it. Uh, so what I want to do is talk about this morning is kind of see what we can do going forward. If you don't want to come out, you don't want to march, then that's not your thing. Understand. What can we do? What do you think we can do as a community to to Get get that like that passion right. for each other uh, to get out well, there and help one another. Shoot, we're doing it right now. We're talking about it. You know, we 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 informing people what's going on, and hopefully, you know, by us talking about it, however you feel about the trial, uh, you know, um, this might force other people to talk about it. You know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, at my church, we had a uh, uh, a farm at our church the day after the trial, mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, it was just a panel. It wasn't really no sermon. It was just conversation about it, and uh, that's all they did. It was a couple judges that was up there and gave their opinion, uh, attorneys and everything. And uh, it wasn't one side. It was from both sides of the issue. You know, some was for, some wasn't. But I think you know that's a good start. You know, just talking about it. And if we keep talking about it, keep bringing it up, then you know, some good will come out of that. Because people didn't start marching that first with Martin Luther King Jr. It right, all, but, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but they had a lot of action. It yeah, was talk. They huddled up, made a play, and went and ran it. Yeah, they did. It seemed like we've been um, huddled up for years. Right, right. We've been talking about it for years. Well, I, I think it's a point where we 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 become complacent. You know, we think mm-hmm. it, you know we 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 think it's it's good now. You know, which is not you know, uh, just by you know uh, prejudice. Period. I'm like you know not even color. You know, what I'm saying people just come complacent and not. Want to want to do the right thing and talk about the right thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, right, like right now is a is a good start. You know. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna we're up against a short break. This is uh, Church Information Over for my Marion Barnett, your host. Uh, we'll be coming back with uh, Ryan McCray, and we're gonna be talking about Trayvon Martin situation, as well as child protective services, um, what we can do to help our youth. I'm Marion Barnett, your host, and we'll be right back. You're listening to KNON 89.3 FM, Dallas and Fort Worth. Pledge now. Call 972-647-1893 now to make your pledge. When they're gone, they're gone for good. This is Scott from KNON's Texas Blues Radio telling you don't miss out on some great blues. Kano Wen's Texas Blues Radio Volume 5 Blues CD. It's a CD put together by real blues fans for real blues fans like you. Texas Blues Radio Volume 5 features great local blues from Michael J. and the Paul Bird Band, JJ and the Detonators, the Chris Watson Band, the Two Tones, Rough Cut Blues Band, Jess Stone with Charlie Love, Dave Millsap, Sirloin and the Ass Kicking Machine, Tutu Jones, Blues Boy Bo, Buddy Whittington, Andrea Dawson, Kirkland James, Sonny Collie, and Johnny Red and the Roosters. Get a copy now at Forever Young Records in Grand Prairie, Record Town in Fort Worth, and in Dallas at Bill's Records. This is a Dallas Blues Collector's Item. A very limited amount of vinyl copies can be found at Forever Young Records, the sponsor of this great blues project. CD downloads are available at cdbaby.com. Whether you get it as a download, on vinyl, or on CD, all the proceeds will benefit KNON. For more info on Texas Blues Radio Volume 5, visit KNON.org. Concealed handgun license classes are available from Total Precision Shooting. 
Total Precision Concealed Handgun Licensing offers training for new concealed handgun licenses, renewal of existing handgun licenses, and skilled marksmanship shooting. For more information, 214-395-6852 or on the web at TotalPrecisionShooting.com. KNON thanks Total Precision Shooting for their support of Church and Information Forum with Marion Barnett. Heard every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. on 89.3 FM. Concealed handgun license classes are available now. TotalPrecisionShooting.com or 214-395-6852 for more information. All right, this is Marion Barnett, Jr., your host, hosting this morning, filling in for Marion Barnett Sr., who's on vacation. So make sure you send him your prayers. Uh, this morning we're talking about the one-month anniversary coming up, approaching for the decision for Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman. And I have a, uh, a, a buddy of mine, Ian, uh, Ryan McCray, who's uh, with Child Protective Services, just kind of briefly talking to us about uh, certain steps you can take uh, to make sure you don't get your child taken or if you're interested in adopting. All right. Also, this is the, uh, the tax deductible pledge season, and uh, we have someone that's going to talk to us a little bit about it. We got some interesting stuff here today. We got some uh, Dicky black and gray two tone work shirts. Uh, if you're looking at the video, they're hanging up behind you, you guys. Uh, it says this is a button-up shirt with two pockets. Right side has the KNON logo on it, and the ba on the back has KNON 30 30th anniversary. It comes in medium all the way up. To, well, I should say fry bread size, which is 4X. Um, that's a little carryover from the show I worked. You can get one of these for a hundred dollar pledge. And what's real great about this, you can put this on a monthly payment plan. All you got to do is give Annie a call. She's waiting for your call, and she'll put you on a monthly uh, installment with your bank account. Well, I forgot what the correct term of that is. Can you help me, Annie? That is called a bank draft. Ah, thank you, Annie. <laughs> you All right, hey, uh, well, long as long as you were in there, uh, I got a ladies' uh, super soft jersey, short sleeve shirt, Heather in purple, and black. Uh, 30 year anniversary uh, design on the front comes in small and only up to double X. Uh, I'm sorry, 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 mother, it won't work for you. You can get one of those for fifty dollars and you can get two for ninety. Uh, what we a have deal. A, what a deal! Yeah, and uh, we have what's really new on us. We got what to call these black and silver e reader ear. Boy, I'm not technological here. E reader iPad carrying case with KN1 Voice of the People design. Fifty dollars will get you one. Two for ninety. It's a real bargain. So, why don't you guys carry on and uh, tell me, tell me more. You just you can't get this kind of program anywhere else except KNON. That's People it. come in live. You, we have live guests, and you can call. This is not pre-recorded, folks. Right. You can call in and actually talk to our hosts, talk to our guests. So, nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. Let's light up them phones. Let's light up those phones. Uh, again, this is tax deductible, tax deductible pledge season. Uh, everyone has a goal they have to reach. Make sure you're calling in and uh, putting your money where your mouth is. All right. Uh, this is one of those stations where you can actually, where you have a voice, where you can make a decision, where you can let your voice be heard. If you want to vent, you can call in and give your opinion. You can, if you want to uh, call in and uh, schedule meeting time to. Uh, protest something and whatever it is you want to do this is your voice you are voice of the people you your voice needs to be heard so make sure you're calling in at 972-647-1893 uh or you can log on to knon.org uh, uh doesn't have to be paid right now uh you have three months to pay your pledge all right you just, it's just the pledge is just a commitment you make you can call in and she get you set up on a payment plan but make sure, make sure you're doing that. Again, uh, KNON lost nine shows in 2012. We don't want this to be one of them. Uh, Church Information and Open Forum has been on for uh, over 20 years. So we don't, this is not a show that you want to lose. Um, so make sure you're doing your due diligence to, to keep op uh, open Church Information and Open Forum. All right. Uh, let's get back to our show this morning. I'm give a little another little history fact. Uh, on August the fifth, August the fifth, 1962, uh, Nelson Mandela was in prison. An African American leader, freedom fighter, was in prison in 1962. On this week of August the fifth, was not released until 1990. Mm. It took almost 28 years. It's a long in time, prison brother. For being a freedom fighter. 
All right. So that's just a little history fact. Uh, let's get back to into our show again. We uh, welcoming Ryan McCray, guest this morning, uh, helping me out this morning, talking about uh, CPS Child Protective Services as well. You know, kind of dialoguing with about the uh, decision that was made almost a month ago mm -hmm. uh, on Trayvon Martin. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the. Well, for her first, let me say good morning and a, a big thank you to Tony Morris, who just called in and gave his tax tax deductible pledge. Thank you, Tony Morris, for calling in and uh, putting your money where your mouth is. All right. Uh, give us a call back and uh, dialogue with us, Tony. All right. Uh, but, Ryan, let's get dive back into CPS talk. What's going on? All right. Um, do you all deal with adoptions as well? Um. We really uh, deal with, you know, just foster care. Just foster care. Yeah. I okay. mean, there, I mean there, I'm mean, i sure there's avenues to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but foster care is, uh, you know, our main issue. Uh, our slogan is we, we protect the unprotected. So, okay. you know, yeah. Okay. And uh, briefly d uh, describe to us what are some of the steps for a child to be taken. If, if they were to be taken into foster care, what are some of the steps that have to occur before they would be taken? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, there's there's a lot of lot of issues. With that. I mean, with not the 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 parents are are, are well equipped enough to raise a child. Mm -hmm. uh, drugs yeah, financially. Well, no. Well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, you know, if 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 the child's in good 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 care, mm -hmm. then you know there's no issue. But if you're living on the street. You know, or things in the nature, and you have a child, then you know, of course, the parent would want to would want better for the child. So, you know, um, there are some things that you can do to where you can, uh, you know, uh, foster that child up until you get yourself, you know, mm -hmm. self in order. Uh, drugs play a factor if you're, if there's drugs in the home. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, will come out. Uh, physical abuse mm -hmm. uh, on the parent or the child. Uh, you know, excessive discipline, things of that nature. So, you know I mean, there's a lot of factors that can play. Play, you know, affecting that that situation. Okay. I know there are many that believe that um, foster care uh, is a, a highway. Some feel a highway to prison. Foster uh, care. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there are so many that do not like the foster care home system. What are some of the things that are going on in foster care that? Um, that have taken course over the last few years to prevent certain things of being overcrowding or right. uh, mm -hmm. or negative things happen. I know since it's all, a lot of kids in one spot, right. um, there are many things that can happen. What are some of the things that have taken course over the years that could prevent could prevent, well, prevent tragedy? Well, of course, you know, uh, far as care, you know, there, there's a lot of education, a lot of teaching, mm -hmm. you know, before you can even you know become a foster parent. So, uh, you know, the 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 whole Teaching aspect, okay. Well, this is what well, this is what we need to do. This is how we need to do it. So it's not like we 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 let any any anybody be a foster parent. I, I, there's a there's a process that you have to go through. There's a screening screening that you have to go through. Um, I mean, f so for the most part, you know, I mean, foster I mean, foster parents are are pretty much well educated and well versed mm -hmm. in you know the things that they need to do. You know, uh, to 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 be a better role model. Uh, parent to that kid right but uh is there in foster homes is there's only so many kids per foster home uh you mean like per home like per house you mean yeah um uh, i mean of course you, you can't have like 15 20 you mm -hmm. know um as long as as long as the home is is as long as you or the home you know what i'm saying can can take care of the kid you know, I I think it should be fine. I mean, if you have a one bedroom home, and it's, and it's you and your husband, and you try to get seven kids, I, that that's not going to. I guess work. I'm I guess I'm misunderstood. Um, let clarify this for me. When they go to a foster home, is that uh, is that almost like getting a parent, or is that they're going to a home with other children? They are in a similar situation. Um, when you go to a foster home, you're going home with a parent. Okay. You know, so you know you're not going into a facility per se. Okay. You know, when you're a foster parent, you know you, you're able to foster, you mm -hmm. know, those kids into your home. Uh, so it's not, you know, it's not like a, a a home or a facility. Right. You know, we we try to get you know kids and you know young people, 
into homes that uh that can better them better better their situation emotionally, physically. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it's more or less a home with 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 foster parents. Okay, so uh, you want to be a foster parent, and you wanted to help a child out who maybe uh, was not doing well. What would you need to do to uh, get signed up? Um, you could actually uh, you know call call us up and you know we'll we'll uh, uh, point you in the right direction. You know the things mm-hmm. you need to do. Of course, there's background checks. You know, we'll we'll uh, come check out the home, see if the home is, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, well enough to to take care of children. And, you know, just find a lot about you. So we'll 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 come to you. We'll sit down and talk, and you know, we'll decide. You know, if, if things work out. Right. Are there enough parents out there to uh, assist with children who need this kind of care? Well, there's never enough. I mean, never enough. You, you know, there's never enough. You. you you always want parents, people that's that's going to help the youth anyway. I mean, there's no limit. So I mean, mm-hmm. the more the merrier. You know. Do you find yourself making? Uh, let's say you have kid brothers and sisters who are where well, it's maybe four or five of them. Uh, do you find it harder to find parents for those who are maybe a little older? Yeah, it, it is like for teenagers and whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, it is. But I mean, like I said, that's why we need more. You know, more mm-hmm. in the system that that can. I mean, there are people that that will do it. Don't get me wrong. But uh, uh, we need more adults that'll step in and you know be role models to the to the young adults to this you know fifteen, sixteen, thirteen. You know what I'm saying around right. that age right there. So right. uh, there's never ne- there's never a limit. You always want to keep going. Okay. And wh- is there a time limit on how long they can stay with a foster parent, or uh, do you find that some foster parents try to adopt their foster kids? Uh, Eighteen. Is is a time I, I believe. I mean, you know, you it's it's just like in a home. Once you're 18, then you're adult. You know, um, you know, as far as the help. I mean, I'm, help can go past that also. But as far as being a foster parent, you know, mm-hmm. 18, uh, 19 in some situations. But does it also depend on if the um, the biological parent is trying to get that child back, and if they take the necessary steps to get their children back mm-hmm. they can be taken from the foster parent sometimes but you know that's a uh, that's treading water i mean like you know if the parent is taking the proper steps you know what i'm saying to better themselves and mm-hmm. you know and they're showing it by going to different classes and the parental classes and you know uh drug abuse class alcohol you know whatever class they need to be in mm-hmm. then you know then we'll sit down and you know discuss you know how we can make that happen for them Right, 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 right. Okay. And again, this morning we're talking to uh, uh, Ryan McRae, who is a uh, CPS worker and uh, just kind of giving us a brief history and brief uh, synopsis on Child Protective Services. If you're interested uh, in being a foster parent, is there a website that they can go to maybe to find out some facts or? Um, they could probably go to the uh, uh, DFPS. DFPS. Uh, yeah, the website. And uh, there's some some links on there that can point you to the right. Is that dfps dot org dot com dot org dfps dot yeah. org? Okay, yeah. all right, good. Uh, you can go to sure. dfps dot org if you're interested in becoming a foster parent. And like you said, there's uh, never enough. Uh, children are at need. There are many of you who um, are considering adoption. This may be a, an a, a alternate route there uh, where you can kind of get in there and hone in, mentoring, do certain things with children. Uh, I know that the older kids have a hard, at least from what I heard, uh, the older kids have a harder time getting parents or foster care parents. So if you're interested in helping in that, in that capacity, uh, you can log on to dfps.org and uh, make you, and try to become a foster parent. Um, also, again, this morning, the, this is the 30th anniversary pledge, uh, so make sure you're calling in your tax-deductible pledge this morning. Uh, it's very important that your voice is heard, so make sure you're putting your money where your mouth is. Uh, again, they lost, uh, Ken Wynn lost nine shows in 2012. We don't want this to be one of them. So make sure, make sure, make sure you are calling in and giving your tax-deductible pledge. You have three months to pay your pledge, so uh, you can call in and speak to one of to uh, Ann and she can get you set up on a payment plan. I do understand that it's uh, back to school season and there are many of you who are preparing for your children, nephews, nieces, friends uh, to get those supplies in. 
uh, I know there's a uh, actual um, a back to school drive if you need if your children need supplies and things of that nature. I know uh, at the YMCA on August 17th, which is next Saturday. Uh, they're doing a back-to-school drive at the YMCA off Hampton Road. Um, and if you need more information about it, the number to call is 214-497-9969. 214-497-9969. You can call that number and get as much information as you can about uh, receiving some supplies for your children, whether it be backpacks, uh, notepads, pens, pencils, things of that nature. Uh, if you need any help. With supplies again, the number to call is 214 497 9969. Uh, it'll be in your best interest to you don't have to go out and purchase all the supplies, you can stop by and pick up a few things uh, for your children. Okay, um, that's August 17th at the YMC off Hampton Road. I'll try to get that address for you before the end of the show. Uh, that's uh, the YMC off Hampton Road in Dallas. All right, um, again, uh we are approaching the one month anniversary of the decision for Trayvon Martin, and I know many of you out there have a a, a, a a thought, or maybe your thought process have changed within the last month. Uh, you know, we've heard a lot of things that came out before the trial, after the trial, during the trial. Uh, so make sure you call in and give your call and comment. That number is nine seven two. 647-1893 972-647-1893 uh, Call in and give us your call and comment I, I would love to speak to you on, on how you're feeling after the situation I know me personally I did. My feelings have not changed uh, uh, And how I feel about it is It's a travesty that, But I did prepare for it Because I felt like it was coming But after the break Give us a call and comment uh nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. This is Church Information Open Forum. I am Marion Barnett, your host this morning. KNON's Lambda Weekly LGBTQ Talk Show is holding the first ever Lambda Luncheon and live broadcast on Saturday, August 24th at the KNON Studios. This event will be a tribute to former Dallas City Councilwoman Angela Hunt of District 14, thanking her for her tireless efforts and service to the community. Join David Taffet, the late Patty Fink, and Lerone Landis acknowledging the achievements of Angela Hunt during a live broadcast of the longest-running LGBTQ talk show on America's airwaves. The promises to be discussion of hot topics and reflection Lections with Angela Hunt. Following the broadcast will be a delicious lunch from Ty Riffick at noon. This is your chance to be a part of live radio. For tickets or more information, knon.org. That's the first ever Lambda Luncheon with David Taffet, Patty Fink, Lerone Landis, and former Dallas City Councilwoman Angela Hunt on Saturday morning, August 24th, beginning at 11 a.m. Doors open at 10.30 a.m. This is a KNON benefit event. All proceeds go to support Lambda Weekly on KNON. That's right. This program is your program. You own this program. And guess what? I'm waiting on you to call in at 972-647-1893, knon.org. Hey, guess what? We're waiting on you. Today is a great day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. My pockets are full of money and overflowing, and some of it is going to K-N-O-N. All right, caller. Do I have you on line one? Is that caller on line one? One right there doing a pledge. This is William, your videographer for the KNON talk shows. You can watch church information and forum by going to the KNON.org website. Click on schedules to the left side of your screen. Choose church information and forums page. Scroll to the bottom of that page, then choose your favorite show to watch or download. This show will be ready for viewing by lunchtime Tuesday. Have a great day. All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Marion Barnett, uh, your host this morning, hosting Church Information and Open Forum for Marion Barnett Sr. this morning. Uh, got a lot of things to talk about. Um, and we lost the music this morning, so it kind of threw me off, but that's okay. Uh, God is good. That he is. Uh, we have a guest this morning in named Ryan McCray from Child Protective Services talking to him this morning. Uh, but we are still talking about the 
approaching one month anniversary of Trayvon Martin, the decision, how you're feeling about the situation. Uh, if you have something that you want to talk about, feel free to give us a call at 972-647-1893. Uh, I would love to hear your call and comment. Uh, also, we're up against the 30th anniversary of the pledge drive make sure make sure make sure make sure you're calling your tax deductible pledge drive in i want to say a big special thank you to tony morris for calling and giving your tax deductible pledge uh, in order for this show to remain it does take money so make sure you're putting your money where your mouth is this is one of the few shows where you can call and you can you have a voice uh i know it used to be one hour on Tuesdays, but now you have two hours on on Saturdays, so you have more time, more space to do more things. All right, so make sure you're calling that tax deductible pledge in. Make sure this don't be one of the shows that get taken. You know, there was nine shows that were taken in 2012, so make sure this is not one of those shows. All right, uh, there's a lot of items you can get, like a Dickies black and gray two tone work shirt. Uh, this is a button-up shirt with uh, two pockets, right side pocket, and it, and it has a K-N-O-N logo on the back of the shirt. Uh, it has the K-N-O-N 30-year anniversary from uh, 1983-2013 design in white. And it comes in all sizes, all the way from medium to uh, 4X. That is a $100 pledge drive shirt. So if you pledge $100, that's one of your options, all right? That's one of the most expensive options then we got some other items uh such as a black or white t-shirt with a 30-year anniversary on a design um uh that's just a regular t-shirt with uh that's a comes in small all the way up to 5x all right and that's a 50 to 90 dollar uh pledge drive shirt so get those tax deductible pledge drive there's other things such as uh soft jersey super lady super soft jersey short sleeve uh, it was in purple or black. This also had a 30 year anniversary design on it. That comes with the $50 pledge. As well as a black and silver e reader slash iPad carrying case. So if you have an iPad or e reader, you can have, you have a case. All right. And it has Voice of the People design on there. So make sure you call those pledges in. All right. Let's make sure this is one of the shows that remain on in 2013. All right. Uh, Let's go to our phone lines this morning, and let's say good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ike. How are you? I'm doing great this morning. How are you doing? Doing just fine, sir. All right. First of all, I'm, I enjoy the program, and uh, I heard some of your guests say that i like to come in on. He said the way we handle these situations is we talk about it, and that's mm -hmm. what we're doing. You know, a lot of people get criticized for just talking about on the radio, and they say, well, we're you're not doing anything but talking, but... That's where it starts. That you know, you have to talk to organize and everything else. And right. and I I was I heard you say that you was kind of disappointed with the turnout. Yeah. With the protest and you know, uh, me, I was at Gina. You know, I went to Gina, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. You know, for the Gina Six thing, and right. it was one of the greatest turnouts you ever want to see. But I was disappointed because it looked like they lost focus. You know, in different. Uh, political people or different organizations, they start dividing themselves and everybody had their own agenda. Popularity contest. Was, yeah, and that's what happened in Red Hill. Uh, you know, uh, it was the Reverend Al Sharpton that called this, but, you know, and then people rallied. And I'm going to say this, I'm not going to take up much time, but here in our area, just like Dallas, where, okay, we have one of the highest rates of exonerees in the nation, you know, and that's mean we have a higher rate of people being wrongfully incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And that kind of stuff needs to be discussed and talked about, and we need to rally around that kind of stuff. We got a lot of police uh, killing people that don't even have weapons on them. Or, uh, then we have police beatings, and not just the police department the house chain, but we got a lot going on right here in our own city. And I think for us to get the people to rally together like we know they should rally and come together, uh, they, their confidence in leadership has to be restored. So when leaders go and pitch their own platform and, it, uh, and something else is already going on, uh, that throws people off and they get, they don't want to come together because they see that, you know, a lot of our leaders are politically focused and they're trying to get reelected, you know. So, and we have a lot going on right here in our own city, right here in our own county, 
we got enough. We got more than Gina right here. We got more than Trayvon right here. But we focus on stuff that's happening in other areas of the country and not on what's going on here, you know. And once we start coming together in Dallas and put a stop to some of the stuff, you know, we got a young man locked up right now for for something that somebody already confessed to doing, and no one is giving any answers on why have having this young man been released. What, what, says, been in, what situation are you talking about? I'm talking about the, 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 the uh, Ladarius Ewing situation. Okay. For burning the dog. They already mm-hmm. got a man that, con- that they done convicted, and he done already confessed. He done already made a deal. And Reverend Wright with Justice Seeker, they done already they had a press conference. And, they, and then, why haven't this young man been released? Or, or why hasn't he been taken to trial? And see, one thing that happens here, and I don't want to get too deep in politics, but you take these young people here in Dallas, you lock them up in jail, and not just Dallas. You leave them in jail long enough, and they they don't get the right kind of legal uh, representation. And after you're in jail, you'll start confessing anything because of the way they plea bargain you. You know, they give you these plea bargain lawyers, and you start saying, well, and they, they're saying, well, you just take the deal and go on down for six months, just plead guilty, then you won't be here. Or you just sit in jail and rot. Mm-hmm. So we got all this going on in our communities that we don't even have to worry about what goes on with Zimmerman. I mean, that's a tragedy, but yet and still it's in fraud, and we ought to be concerned, and we ought to come together. But if we don't come together, then why would I catch a plane or a bus or even drive my car to Florida to, to protest something, and we worse off here than they are? Well, so yeah, I'm, that is true. I, 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 I think... Uh, the reason for that is uh, is the, the more people know about the Trayvon Martin George Zimmerman case, then uh, Dallas media is very smart. They don't uh, continuously repeat and play certain things because they are, people start to develop a passion for it. Uh, right, and they don't put it out there. But like you said, uh, Reverend Ron Wright with Justice Seekers, I know he does an outstanding job with finding certain things out, and he he's fighting for for our African Americans in the Dallas Fort Worth area. All right. So and, and and like you said, you said you use the word smart. I use the word controlling. The media is mm-hmm. is very controlling because mm-hmm. it's controlled by the powers that be or whoever mm-hmm. has the money. You know. Uh, right. We lost a great radio station. I, I, I like this radio station, don't get me wrong, but we lost a well-known uh, African-American radio station that wasn't owned by African-Americans. We lost that to the same people who your father said is trying to buy his spot. Mm-hmm. So the media knows how to shut down different uh, avenues of information so people can't get out and rally like they need to or fight the right fight. So when we are talking, just like your most of our local newspapers, our black newspapers, our African American newspapers, well, they'll start out pretty good, but then once they are on target, and next thing you know, they got all these inserts from Walmart, Home Depot, or uh, some of the grocery store chains, and then all of a sudden, they're not writing about stuff that's going to help people anymore. You know, they just, they, they become a community calendar, so to say, you know telling you about different events and one of my arguments with, with, with a, uh, one of the newspaper editors right here in Dallas was that every black politician they make him look like a hero mm-hmm. and so you know it's a lot of things going on in politics every, just because you are, your, your skin color is black or red or white doesn't mean you good or bad but if the newspapers would report the news especially in the black community as it should be reported, not make every politician that comes on TV look like a superhero because some of them are not. Some of them are really hurting us and turning around what we have fought for for years. You look at a man like Mark Beesey. Now, I supported Mark Beesey. Uh-huh. And I, I think he's a upcoming young politician with some new blood. Okay. And like a guy, we got uh, Eric Johnson. I believe he mm-hmm. had the same qualities, but if they fall in following the footsteps of the old politician that's in uh, that's in control right now, we're, we're not going to get anywhere, but we're going to continue to go around the same circle until we make a rut 
and we'll never get out of this uh, rut that we're in. And I'm not going to be very talking about what I'm talking a long time, but we need to move up and not around. And so what I'm saying is it's programs like this. That's why I send my players in. I make a mm-hmm. pledge and send it in because people like your father that will put truth out there. Mm-hmm. And truth is hard to argue with. You know, the only way that you can argue with truth, and they're not arguing with truth, but they will stop truth, shut truth down because... The Bible said we perish from the lack of knowledge. And Mm -hmm. so when they cut out the knowledge, then we perish. Right. Well, thank you for your call and coming. All right. God bless you. Have a good day. Uh, You too. Uh, Everything he said was up to Paul. Uh, Now, I do feel like that, uh, you know, uh, he did make the comment that, you know, it does start with talking with the uh, Trayvon Martin situation. I know you at your church, you say you all had a uh, forum where you all open yeah, where we, you all talk. Yeah, a little forum we talked about it. Right, right, right. And again, we're talking to Ryan McCray this morning uh, with Child Protective Services. Uh, but I do feel like there is a it, it, there is a cutoff. I feel like you can huddle up and you can say so much, but there has to be action after uh, you've talked. And right. it, with no action or the lack of participation with the action that we did have. Uh, uh, I stated that that with the Gina Six about five six years ago, there were a, a lot of people that that were bust out to Louisiana and Gina. It was called the Gina Six, and for that participation, uh, where kids were violated in their community by police officers and things of that nature, not necessarily killed, uh, but just where they were violated it was an outstanding turnout i mean it, it, uh there were many people that were pushing the issue like reverend al sharp and uh michael bays and you had ricky smiley uh a bunch of the commentators uh black uh that are in media that were pushing the issue right. and as well with the trayvon martin situation too However, after the decision was made, you know, many felt like we should have had a citywide, not just here in Dallas, but all over in America where there were people protesting, people doing certain things to make sure that this kind of situation doesn't happen again. Because we have those laws, stand your ground laws Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, many feel that's just a cop out for when you kill somebody Mm -hmm. or standing my ground. All right, and it's one of those things that that law needs to be re looked at. Well, I mean, I, like I said, I think the big thing we do is educate our youth, our coming mm-hmm. up youth, and what's going on. I mean, in in every aspect of you know of what's going on in our community and our in our country. So, uh, I think it's our duty, you know, to do our mm-hmm. part. Now, whether or not you you agree with the case or not, uh, in every aspect, education, life. Life skills, how to be a man, how to be a woman, you know, you know, what I'm saying things of that nature. You know, if we teach our our youth, you know, the proper things that they need to do, then I think we're 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 definitely stepping to the right place. Right, and, and, and teaching them is one thing, but living it is another. Yeah. Uh, there, are, I know when my father was growing up, he grew up in a time where uh, civil rights movement was at its one of his highest and I can rem- I got an opportunity to, to meet uh, like your uh, Ralph Abernathy's uh, many people who don't know who he is but right. it's it's a, it's a difference from living it and teaching it because uh, you know like I know when we sit in, in a history class right. uh, when you're in school and they're talking to you about the uh, confederacy and things and it's one thing to hear it and be taught and it's one thing to be out there and you're witnessing it right. you're living it Right. You know, and and that's one thing I think our youth don't get an opportunity it's to what, really see is it's to live it. Yeah, it's to live it. They have something to talk about when they when they, you know when they get old and they have their own right. kids. They talk about hey, this is the steps we took. You right. know, it's, uh, well, you got to teach to live it though. I mean, like you do have to educate. Teaching is starting. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And it also you got to have some kind of role models too. So we as mm-hmm. adults need to stand in the gap and mm-hmm. you know tell these young people the uh, the things that we need to do. And show them, like you said, as well. You got to live it, right? So, because we all know that something, some place, some things uh, are better. Uh, you better with hands on when you're out there in the field. Right. And I did, and I, and I did get to see a lot of 
uh, uh, children where parents brought their children to the uh, rally on the uh, 21st in downtown. Like I said, there was a couple of different rallies going on. I wish it had been more organized where we could have one big one to show right. our uh, stands on it. However, uh, you know, it was separated. And right. I, as far as I know, there was two going on, one at the city hall and one at the federal building. Yeah. So uh, those who went, I want to say a, a, a special thank you. Um, like the brother said, like he said, you know, lack of knowledge of people parents. So we, exactly. we, we're doing the right thing by, you know, talking about it, informing people about it. All right, good, good, good. Let's go back to our phone lines and say, let's say good morning to Carol. Good morning, Carol. Hello? Yes, good morning, Carol. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'd like to make a comment real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to be skeptic. I just want to say that uh, I hate to, hate to be a, a First of all, I don't know y'all was going to call me this week. Uh, let me get on. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. I just like to say if it's good for us to sit down and talk and rally and march. But, you know, over the years, this has been 50 years since Martin Luther King did the Civil Rights Movement. I think the status quo, I already know, that after a little while, we're just going to go back to doing our regular shopping. The mall's going to be full. The car lot uh, dealership's going to still sell cars. And the gold places still going to sell the gold. If we could just hold back our economic, financial support to these different businesses and societies or whatever, if we could hold that back and really be solid with it, I mean, on one accord as a race, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's really not racial. You know, because there are other races that's, that's it's beginning to happen, too. But we are in the maximum. I mean, in the we get, uh, I think we are violated more Far as too a often. black race. But uh, I'm just saying, um, I really sometimes feel sold out uh, about when it's regards to the so-called black leaders. Mm -hmm. I just wonder, do they get a fee to come represent these people who, who be uh, uh, profiled or whatever? Do they get a fee to come and you know, sensationalize the uh, the incidents or whatever, because nothing never changes. It's like we're still, we still like the little, uh, we're in a circle just going around and around and around. You know, we'll march, we'll talk, we'll meet and get on TV. But after that, you go back to our regular everyday thing. And until we uh, expand and maximize our economic base in our own race, because they know that after about a few months, uh, we're still going to get a big Christmas sale. You know, the store is still going to sell out. Because I've even sit and watched, even at, here in Dallas at Redbird Mall, after any kind of, uh, even after Christmas, you can go the next week and the mall is back full again. Because it's about, um, it's about the commercialism of everything, not just the holidays, but it's the commercialization of selling the, uh, Really, tell the truth, those hoodie things that the poor little baby Trayvon had on, I don't even see, you know, it's summertime. Why are they, why do the young people, maybe I don't understand them. I know I'm, I'm, I'm in my 50s and I may not, I don't, I have teenagers, grandchildren. Hey, excuse me, Carol. Think they, yes. One, could you hold one second? We up against a short break and I want you to finish your comments, so we're going to come right back to you, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, this is Marion Barnett, Church Information Open Forum. Uh, I'm Marion Barnett, your host this morning. You're listening to KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. The Sons of Herman Lost Disc Airmen Disc Golf Association and the Gas Pipe. The Gas Pipe, the Gas Pipe present the first annual KNON Disc Golf Tournament and After Party on Saturday, September the 7th. The tournament we held at B.B. Owens Park located at 10700 Kingsley Road in Dallas beginning at 4 p.m. There will be goodie bags, games, an ace hole contest, poker run, and more. Then, beginning at 7 p.m., the party starts at the Sons of Herman Hall located at 3414 Elm Street in Deep Ellum with free food and live music by Texas Slim, Jay Johnson, and All Lit Up. To register, contact me, Hippie Bob. 
Wilbanks at 972-658-8577 or go to KNON.org. Participants of the Disc Golf Tournament admitted free into the after party. But if you just want to go down to the show, you can get tickets at KNON.org. That's the first annual KNON Disc Golf Tournament and After Party on September the 7th at B.B. Owens Park and the After Party with Texas Slim, Jay Johnson, all lit up and free dinner at the Sons of Herman Hall. Presented by the Sons of Herman Hall, Lost Disc Airman Discus Off Association, and the Gas Pipe, the Gas Pipe, the Gas Pipe. This is a KNON benefit event. Representative Jim Himes says it's appalling. He was talking about the money that special interest stuff in the pockets of our lawmakers. It's disgusting, and it opens the possibility of conflicts of interest and corruption, he added. So, naturally, he promptly joined the disgusting system that has turned our capital into a wide-open bazaar for buying and selling legislative favors. It's unfortunately the world we live in, the Connecticut Democrat shrugged. Even though Himes is only in his third term, he's become an aggressive trader in this bazaar, heading up fundraising for his fellow Democrats in the U.S. House. Why him? One, as a member of the committee that oversees Wall Street, he can attract campaign cash like honey attracts flies, especially when big banks are lobbying furiously to get exemptions from legislation that restricts some of their destructive profiteering. Two, Himes has proven to be a trusted ally of the Wheeler Dealer bankers, supporting their dereg bills. And three, he's one of them, having been made a millionaire as a Goldman Sachs banker. Republicans are totally in Wall Street's pocket, but Democrats are sinking into it too, with the admirable exception of Representative Maxine Waters and a handful of other Dems who stood with consumers. Most Democrats on the committee joined every Republican member in May to do the bank lobby's bidding. Six days later, Himes' fundraising operation arranged for the seven freshman Democrats on the committee, each of whom had stood with the bankers, to trek up to the heights of Wall Street for a personal bonding session with the CEOs of Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase. Thus are forged the ties that bind. This is Jim Hightower saying, hey, Democrats, don't just deplore this corrupt system. Stand with us to overthrow it. To learn how, go to www.publiccampaign.org. And so... All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, this is Marion Barnett hosting Church Information and Open Forum this morning. Uh, we are up against our tax-deductible pledge season, and we got some items oh, that Jim wants us. Very interesting here for, for Marion's show. We have a gospel uh, T-shirt here. It, uh, it's heavenly blue, 100% cotton, uh, black gospel design in front, comes in medium to 3X. You can also get a uh, uh, baseball cap with a white design, sky lo- oh boy, I can't talk today, Skyline logo in front, K-N-O-N. And we also have a barbecue apron with a white K-N-O-N, Dallas Skyline in the front. $40 will get you, a $40 pledge that is, will get you one item. These are gifts to you that let you know how we appreciate you. 70 will get you two. And all and the hundred dollar will get you all three items. That's good. That's all. But the, let's light up these phones. We need some more conversation. Those are good calls. Yeah, yeah. Let's light up these phones. Uh, so make sure you guys are calling in at nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. Again, this is the tax deductible pledge season, thirtieth uh, anniversary. So make sure you calling in, making your tax deductible pledge. KNON is one of the few shows, uh, the only show that I know, where you can make, actually call and have your comment heard on the air live. Uh, and you can uh, put your money where your mouth is, okay? So make sure you're calling in, 972-647-1893, 972-647-1893 to make your tax deductible pledge. You don't have to pay right now. It, it's uh, You have three months to pay. I'm sure Ann will get you set up on a payment plan and get you set away. I understand it's um, uh, back to school season, so... There are other options out there. I know there's a uh, back-to-school drive at the YMCA off of Hampton on August 17th. That is next week, August 17th, uh, at 1 o'clock off of, at the YMCA off Hampton. So if you need more information about it, the number to call is 214-497-9969. 214-497-9969. So make sure you are making your tax deductible pledge as well as if you if you if you or you know someone that is in need of supplies the number to call is 214-497-9969 so you can come out and get some supplies at the ymca that is next saturday 
one o'clock at the uh, YMCA off Hampton. All right. Um, let's go back to our phone lines. We were in mid conversation with Carol. Uh, good morning, Carol. Good morning. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, could you, I want you to finish your comment. It looked like you had a very good point on what you were stating earlier about uh, the economic situation of uh, fighting some of our biggest rivalries. So go ahead. Well, you know, I know I've said a whole lot, and my friends are going to be calling because they're going to recognize my voice in a little bit. But, you know, we first thing, we need to go back. The first thing, I forgive me, God, go back to church. We have so many people go back to our first love you know um even during the civil rights movement with with martin luther king um you know we were more church oriented we had god first in our lives when i was growing up in the 60s i didn't even know people who didn't go to church you know because there's a people we you know we we handle slavery and all of our uh situations in life through god and through going to church and having that church connection mm -hmm. but um did you grow up in the funny. dallas area Yes, I did. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wanted, you know, I, I've talked out too much. You know, somebody else might want to call in, but I'll call again some other time. Well, I want you to finish your uh, economic uh, demise uh, on. You know, you know and uh, okay, well, really, we do. We spend more on at, at uh, malls and on clothes and gold. And I always say um, the other races. I'm not racist or whatever, you know, because it's white people in my family, really. You know, we have a lot of mixture in our family. But uh, we spend so much on gold, clothes, and cars. And that, and add to cell phones, I know people who don't even have food in their refrigerator and got this $100, $200 Galaxy cell phones and uh, Android and everything, you know. But, you know, we get carried away with the things of life instead of taking care of our own self on the first on a first come first serve basis, you know, our foundation, you know, your family, your your uh your saving, you know, saving money and just having a, a a base for your family and your children. You know, I know little teenagers who have a hundred dollar phone and I don't even have a hundred dollar phone. Mm -hmm. You know, I all, all my phone needs to do for me is just, you know, I do text. Just text and pick up the phone and talk, but it's I, I know a whole lot of little, most of the kids I know, little teenagers have a hundred dollar phone or whatever and they have the nike shoes and all of that they get carried away their parents don't teach them that they have to love god first you know and you the shoes don't make you the the uh, designer things don't make a person you know you're you really wearing the shoes you make the name to make the people rich the nikes and the jordans and all of these and i just really had my first pair of designer tennis shoes like this year you know mm -hmm. um but I, you know, I know the young kids. That's what that's what is out now, and that's what what is popular. But you know, even in my own family, my grandchildren they get kind of carried away with the designer things, and you know, it's just I think sometimes they get carried away that by thinking that having these certain designer clothes is gonna make them like the big kid or the big guy, or girl on campus or on on the block or whatever. And to me. I'm I'm saying be a designer and get your own name on something, you know, like the guy did uh, on uh, is it Fubu? Yeah, that's the only about the only one two or no. Carl mm -hmm. Panay and and uh, Damian, yeah. But um, mm -hmm. I think I I race as a whole. If we could just get uh, past trying to just bling bling and have a, a big car with some spinning wheels, I think if we could just do the basic, you know, it's okay to have that when you can afford it. But not at the expense of your whole financial situation. Right. And so what you're saying, we can come together economically and not support the ones who continuously oppress us. You know, it'll put us in a better state. It would put us in a much, much better space because they feel like, oh, we can do whatever to them. They don't respect us. If mm -hmm. we hold back just a little, you know, just, okay, if you're going to do Christmas, just do that. Do it uh, on a sensible basis. Don't mm -hmm. do it to where... I work at an organization to where people would go and spend everything on, on Christmas and not even be able to pay their mortgage and come in for a foreclosure, foreclosure help. And I said, ma'am, you know, is, your, is it worth losing your house? Well, you know, I have to buy Christmas stuff for my children. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's at that point to where we sacrifice everything just for birthday parties and, and uh, uh, graduation parties and, you know, 
I don't know, I don't understand it really. I I could never go and uh, that's just my personal opinion. I could never spend my main uh, uh, budget on something like gold or you know something like that because you know it's not worth it. It hurts your whole family when you spend to have the uh, the uh, uh, Xboxes and all of this uh, worldly stuff. And I know children have need to have something to play with nowadays because all we had back in the day was Monopoly. And I know they want more than that, but it's just have to. It comes to a point where we have to, you know, we have to support our own self. We have to uh, just, you know, be down or be concerned about our own issues and not not just shopping and having a lot of stuff that uh, it's not going to uh, help our uh, race. Mm, race. Community. Community, thank mm-hmm. you. In a, uh, It's not going to help us in a positive way. And I just think we need to, we need to uh, hold back our economic, uh, financial, uh, support or whatever until we can gain our own respect first if we don't respect ourselves no one else is ever going to respect us uh, all right Th- carol thank you for your call and comment this morning thank you for your call and comment uh-huh. uh you. that is a very great point uh you know anytime you hit somebody where we're in their pockets you know things yeah. will change yeah uh when you start hurting their pockets i know there were are certain companies uh again we're talking about the uh one month approaching anniversary for the George Zimmerman case. I have uh, Ryan McCray in the building with me today. Uh, uh, the, the point that Carol was making, if you hit them in their pockets, uh, things will change right. is what I got from it. Uh, and I know there were certain companies that were supporting uh, George Zimmerman's uh, uh, fees. Right. And those companies were put out uh, there were some, actually some pretty popular companies. I don't have the name of them right here with me, uh, but I did get an opportunity to see them. And I think if we, if we as a people and if we as a community stop supporting those companies, right. uh, they will in turn have to do certain things our way. Right. All right. Uh, so that's that was a very good point that she was making. Uh, so thank you, Carol, for that call and comment. Again, don't forget about this is tax deductible pledge season. This is the 30th anniversary. Uh, there's a lot of items that you can get if you call in and pledge fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, up to T-shirts, uh, iPad carrying cases. Uh, there's a lot of items. So make sure you call in those tax deductible pledge pledges. In again, you don't have to pay it right now. You have three months to pay it uh you can call in and she can get you set up on a payment plan so make sure you're calling those tax deductible pledges in we do not want church information open forum to be one of the shows that are canceled in 2013 they did lose nine shows in 2012 so make sure you're putting your money where your mouth is and calling that in also call in and give your call and comment on the subject today or any subject you have on your mind that number is 972 647-1893 972-647-1893 647-1893 or you can log on to knon.org and make that pledge as well okay um, let's go back to our phone lines this morning let's say good, mo- good morning to Tony good morning Tony good morning how you doing just fine sir um, I, I want to make a comment I, you always hear this this argument that we will hold our money if this will happen if you remember when they desegregated the schools and and we had there are certain groups of people who could move out of our community. We had money that was in our community, but what kept a lot of middle class blacks in the community was segregation. Mm-hmm. And we have black banks, we have black barbers, we have black teachers, black schools. Mm-hmm. Once you integrated other cultures or other statements of America, you had to cool it up. And the first question we always go to is, we should pull our money together and boycott. Mm-hmm. And to me, you know, what's the evidence? Yes, you can hurt a company. That is true. You can hurt one company. But this has been over 20 years of evolution of our struggle. And, and at the end of the day, you can pull our money out, the, out of the American economy. Is it going to stop? No. You cannot change people, people perception of they, they don't like black people. They don't like them. And that, and that has nothing to do with money. It has to do with just somebody more fiber and say, okay, I just like this man because he's black rather than, you know, you know, economic. Mm-hmm. 
you know, Trayvon Martin died because part of it is we was not involved locally in politics and statewide. They pass bills every year that affect you and I. And guess guess what? We don't know what they what they passed in the state of Texas, except the abortion bill and the finance. Well, they pass bills all the time. So, um, so it so it, at the end of the day, you know, um, we, we we try to find solutions to, to to have a movement. The Trayvon Martin situation be a movement, not not something that's more or less of something that is uh, that is uh, celebrated because you know we, we we got together and it was wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, there's another, like your, your father said, there's another bo- little boy now, well, he went aboard, a uh, young teenager got shot. His case is going on now. Mm-hmm. We should be talking about that, you know. Because right. Trayvon is a done deal. It's, 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 but at the end of the day, the civil rights movement was a movement that started way before the 60s. Mm-hmm. And if we want that group, we want that movement to happen again, it, it must be some groundwork. You got, you got the Greeks, you have these uh, professional groups. They can call, they can have a call and a, and a list to get people moving. But other than that, let, well, Tony, let, let me ask you a question, Tony. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like uh, if you cancel it, those who canceled their trips to Florida, like, you know, you have yeah. Disney World, uh, Amusement Park, uh, Universal Studios, things, if they cancel those trips, I mean, many people were not going. Do you feel like they will revamp, do certain things uh, to revamp those laws in Florida? Because, you know, there are 21 states that are carrying this uh, stand your ground law. So, in a sense, it, it it can be economical along with the passion of marching and, in, in, like you say, a movement. Okay. Well, let, let me ask it this way then. Texas is one of those states. Do you want to boycott Texas? Now you're putting black people out of work. You're putting the same people out of work for the boycott. So, so are you really helping at the end of the day? Or are you hurting them? Because the same could be said about Texas. And the first mm-hmm. question you ask is, where the jobs are? You know, we need jobs for our community. So what I'm saying is, it needs to be critical thinking at some point to where, okay, your boycott will hurt uh, Florida, but how many blacks are going to be hurt in the process of that boycott? How many jobs are you going to cost? Is, is, is that worth it? You know, I got to feed my family and you boycott. Okay. So, I, I think that's where the community uh, back in the day used to pull together. And part of being a community is everybody helping each other. Uh, <laughs> And, 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 and you're right, we used to have uh, event parties, we used to have, uh, we, we used to have, uh, uh, you know. I'll just stop here, I got to all right, well, thank you for your call and comment, Joe. Uh, thank you for calling and comment. Uh, Joe's making a point that, you know, uh, it is more than economical situation. It, it is, it's, it's, it should be more of a movement. Uh, and that you know if you affect if you do affect the uh economic situation what are you doing to the african americans or the people that are working there such as like i stated if you don't go to disney world and you're not taking your trips to florida you know florida is a tourist state so if you're not doing that you're going to affect the Amer- african americans who are working there and things of that nature uh but we are up against a short break we're up against a short break so give me a call uh we would love to take your phone calls i do have a guest with me in the studio ryan mccray with me this morning uh but make sure you're making calling making your tax deductible pledges and give me a call that number is 972-647-1893 we're up against a short break and we'll be right back In 2012, the Salvation Army sheltered 6,386 homeless men, women, and children, provided over 190,000 hours of substance abuse rehabilitation, and provided day camps and sports programs for needy children. They operated over 200 apartments for low-income seniors, and they provided over $400,000 in financial assistance to those in need. Chances are very good that you know someone who relied upon these services for shelter, recovery, or other forms of emergency help when life for them made a wrong turn. If you are in need or to find out how you can help 1-800-SALARMY that's 1-800-725-2769 or on the internet at salvationarmyusa.org
they're gone, they're gone for good. This is Scott from KNON's Texas Blues Radio telling you don't miss out on some great blues. KNON's Texas Blues Radio Volume 5 Blues CD. It's a CD put together by real blues fans for real blues fans like you. Texas Blues Radio Volume 5 features great local blues from Michael J. and the Paul Bird Band, J.J. and the Detonators, the Chris Watson Band, the Two Tones, Rough Cut Blues Band, Jeff Stone with Charlie Love, Dave Millsap, Sirloin and the Ass Kicking Machine, Tutu Jones, Blues Boy Bo, Buddy Whittington, Andrea Dawson, Kirkland James, Sonny Colley, and Johnny Red and the Roosters. Get a copy now at Forever Young Records in Grand Prairie, Record Town in Fort Worth, and in Dallas at Bill's Records. This is a Dallas Blues Collector's item. A very limited amount of vinyl copies can be found at Forever Young Records, the sponsor of this great blues project. CD downloads are available at cdbaby.com. Whether you get it as a download, on vinyl, or on CD, all the proceeds will benefit KNON. For more info on Texas Blues Radio Volume 5, visit knon.org. Concealed handgun license classes are available from Total Precision Shooting. Total Precision Concealed Handgun Licensing offers training for new concealed handgun licenses, renewal of existing handgun licenses, and skilled marksmanship shooting. For more information, 214-395-6852 or on the web at TotalPrecisionShooting.com. KNON thanks Total Precision Shooting for their support of Church and Information Forum with Marion Barnett, heard every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. on 89.3 FM. Concealed handgun license classes are available now. TotalPrecisionShooting.com or 214-395-6852 for more information. My cup run it over. Come on, baby. Paul right in. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to be right here at 10 o'clock waiting on you. You know why? Because KNON has time for you. We're your radio station and we're waiting on you. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is Marion Barnett, uh, Church Information in Open Forum. Uh, we're back. Uh, probably a little different without the music this morning, but that's okay. God is good. We're going to uh, persevere through it, and uh, next week we'll have it back for you. Marion Barnett Sr. is out on vacation, uh, so keep him in your prayers. He'll be back next Saturday, God willing. Um, we, this is a tax-deductible pledge season, so let's make sure you're calling in your tax-deductible pledges. Uh, there's a lot of items that they have on the list that you can call in and actually purchase, such as a Jumbo 64 black and white windproof umbrella with the KNON Voice of the People logo on there. That is a $75 pl- pledge, so make sure you're calling your tax-deductible pledges in. Also, uh, a black baseball cap with the KNON 89 FM Dallas Skyline logo in the front of it. That is the $40 tax deductible pledge along with a new black and raw blue backpack with a white KNON logo. A $50 tax deductible pledge. Uh, Also a a Big Thunder tote bag. That's a $35 tax deductible pledge. So make sure you guys are calling in. There's other things like folding chairs, uh, a 16 ounce clear print print glass with the KNON logo on it. Voice of the People. Uh, also, a black barbecue apron with the KNON. All of these things, give us a call and get your tax deductible pledge in. This is one of the shows that you want to keep on the air. Uh, we lost about nine shows in 2012, so make sure you're calling your tax deductible pledges in. Put your money where your mouth is. Uh, a lot of people like to call in and voice their opinion. Don't be afraid to do it on in the, during the player season. Just make sure you, you, you're putting your money where your mouth is. You don't have to pay it right now. You got three months to to get it paid so you can call up here and get a payment plan set up whether it be thirty dollars that's ten dollars a month you know so just give us a call at 972-647-1893 972-647-1893 uh i do understand it's back to school season so there's some uh, i'll give you a couple of different options out there instead of spending some some of your money on those supplies at the stores where they're expensive uh there's some uh Supplies that you can get from the YMCA off of Hampton Road in Dallas, uh, uh, where you can go in pick up some supplies. Uh, the Ada Lambda Lambda chapter of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated is actually uh, donating supplies on August 17th. That's next Saturday, uh, uh, a week before school start, where you can get some school supplies for your teenagers, your elementary, middle schoolers. Uh, so make sure the number to call to get more information about that is two one four. 
This morning we have a guest uh, in the studio with me, Ryan McCray. What's up? What's up? Uh, uh, Ryan is from the Child Protective Services. We were talking a little bit about the CPS and certain laws and things of that nature. We're also uh, talking about how do you feel about the one-month anniversary approaching after the decision was made to acquit George Zimmerman. Uh, so give us a call, 972-647-1893. Anything that's on your mind, give us a call. Uh, let's say good morning to line two, Joe. Good morning, Joe. How are you this morning? Hey, how you doing, uh, Reverend Bonnet Jr.? Good, good, good. You doing all right? Yes, sir. I would like to talk about the um, economic downfall of the African-American community. Okay. I was, I grew up around in Fort Worth, Texas. Mm-hmm. And when I grew up, it was a lot of black business. Mm -hmm. And all the black businesses have closed down due to the, um, I guess, due to the um, Walmarts and they can't compete. Right? Mm -hmm. And most of these um, African-American businesses today, they don't make themselves known that they are African-American stores. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They mm -hmm. are. They can't compete. And one thing, they hide the... Um, all our famous people that own these stores, they're hiding the knowledge. They don't want to teach other mm -hmm. African-American people on how to run a business. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's that's one of our downfalls. How are we going to go and spend, do we spend our money with our own selves, right? Right. Then we probably can compete in this society today. Let me ask you a question, because uh, in, in 2013, uh, do you, do you, I'm sure you live in the DFW area. Do you live in an African-American community where there's uh, m majority African-Americans? Yes, sir. Uh, and you don't have any businesses around there anymore? We don't have any black-owned. Only thing we have black-owned is look Stoke. You know That's what I'm it. saying? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the look Stoke could be, you know, this is my only, this is my thing right here. If the if the African American stores make themselves known that we are African American, because you, did you do you see the uh, expanding? It's growing in America, growing in, in Texas today. Oh yeah, they make themselves known. They mm -hmm. got on they they, they make it known that they serving uh, expanding people. You know, mm -hmm. they really don't want no African American business. They serving their people. If we make ourselves known. We can survive this thing. So, do you uh, think? Do you think it's by uh, choice? Do you think it's by design? I and mean, what do you think we could do by, to? It's really by design. It's, it's by design because okay. we want to spend our money. We want to spend, but we don't know where to go and spend our money. We don't even have our own products anymore in these stores. They're not serving. Uh, they're not um, serving our products anymore for the uh, soul food or anything that we like to eat. We have to search for it. And then when a, when a um, black business do come up, they can't compete. Have you been to a black store? Y yeah, I have. I have. And uh, the only they, they the only knock I have on it is uh, customer service. Now, I think we need to go back to teaching our children uh, professionalism and customer service because there are a lot of businesses that I go into because typically the main one that where there's African American uh, dominated is uh, the soul food restaurants right. and you go in and there's that terrible service and uh -huh. uh, you know people tend not to want to come back yeah. uh, so I think if we start teaching our youth and, and educating uh, our peers on customer service and the importance of it because you can make a dollar if you if you can know how to uh, uh, serve right. and, and be uh, humble about it as well as happy happy to serve this yeah. person but we I, I see the uh, what you want type of mm -hmm. attitude uh, and, once, and I'm spending my money but once again that comes back yeah. to you know um, role models we you know we rather see that as and young people yeah, also we have in the studio with us uh, Ryan McCray. That was him uh, making the comment. Yeah, we're going to have to stop hiding mm -hmm. our people that have made it, mm -hmm. right, and got over. They are hiding. What, what do you they mean they're hiding? To, they, they, they moved. They got money. They opened up a business. They moved to, different, they moved to a whole other city or a whole other community. They, they don't come back to teach what? the young people. 
on how to talk or how to run a business. Oh, are, hi- are we hiding them? Or are they moving they on out? They hiding. They, they hiding. Hide. They, they hide. We ain't hiding them. What do when you they think? get their money, they move to a whole other community. Why do you think they uh they hide? They move around like that? Because they they think if somebody gonna rob them. Right. But you grow up in this community your whole life. Right. Mm-hmm. They still robbing people over there in um over in the rich neighborhood. Right. Mm-hmm. They still doing the same thing. If we can clean up and come back and clean up our own situation and show the people, mm-hmm. show the youngsters that I'm still here, brother. Right. You ain't got to do that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right. All right, uh, Joe. Well, we thank you for your call and right, comment this morning. You, and I will be. I'm, I'm gonna come bring my pledge in. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much, Fred. All right. Thank All right. you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, to to piggyback on what uh, Joe was saying, uh, you know, he feels that the economic situation is hindrance in, in partially due to because those who have businesses they move on, move out. African American business they move out, and we don't have anything in that area. That's your question. Do you blame them? Do I blame them? For moving out like that? Me being from this area, I, I'm big on bringing back what you learn. Right. You know, we are, we are men of bridge builders, and right. we can't build right. a bridge for those who that we're not even around. So basically you're saying that those those businesses should persevere through the issues that they deal with and, what is, what is, and, and plant roots in, in, our, in our community. Basically. Exactly. You know, uh, you got to plant seeds. The reason that I, I think sometimes uh, you go to certain areas and it's... Oh, um, it impoverished is because you have a lack of education there. Right. You have a lack of knowledge. As a gentleman called in earlier and stated, uh, uh, there's a lack. There's a lack of everything that you need in that in that area. So if you get a bunch of college students, right. graduating college, and they come back, come back to their home, rebuild their home, rebuild their community. The whole purpose of the African American community back in the day, their system was after you went off and got educated, you came back. You educated your kids, right, things right. of that nature. Uh, uh, after desegregation, many felt like when they were coming back, um, they were in a better situation. It was almost like a I made it moment. Right. And they moved away to show you, I mean, I can live somewhere, I can right. live where I want. Uh, and we do have a lot of people who are going off to school, come back, move out to the and, suburbs. And move stay out, to, out there. Mm-hmm, stay teach. out there, yeah. And, and they're not bringing anything that they learned out there right. back. Well, like I say, a lot of it perseverance. A lot of people don't want to stay and fight it out. You know, a lot of people mm-hmm. make, make a lot of people make it fed up. You know, with mm-hmm. well, I tried. You know, it's not working. I think right. as long as we sit down as a people and you know persevere through all the hard stuff, and I think a change will come. But until that happens, until we like the gentleman said, until we stand firm in our community, that you know, you know, it's never gonna you know make a three sixty turnaround. Right, right, right. Well, let's say let's uh, go back to our phone line this morning. Let's say uh, good morning to Fred. Good morning, Fred. How are you? Good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to say y'all having a uh, very good show this morning. Uh, very mm-hmm. entertaining. Uh, good thoughts and uh, good perspectives on everything. Uh, I always enjoy getting everybody, everyone else's opinion on uh, certain things. <clears throat> uh, so much was going on while I was on hold. I, I almost forgot what I was calling about. <laughs> I, uh, I, I believe I was calling on the George Zimmerman Trayvon Martin case. Okay. And uh, one of the callers was uh, expressing concerns about uh, the stand your ground law. Mm-hmm. And I, I really think it's bigger than that because that that law is all over the country. I, I think the biggest deal is um, the law is in place. But the problem is uh, how it's uh, uh, unequal. Um, if, if you flip the color color on uh, the victim and the perpetrator, we'd have a totally different outcome on this trial right now. If, if George Zimmerman was a black man and Trayvon Martin was a, was Billy Schwartz, we'd have a, it'd be a totally different case. True. And and I think that's what we need to look, what we really need to focus in on is the um, inequalities in our country. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we just lose focus on that. It, stand your ground just sounds good. It sounds like something you can just say. Well, I'm gonna stand my ground. I'm gonna stand my ground. But it, it's a lot bigger than that, you know. Well, and um, but Fred, you know, you, Fred, just, you say it's it's a lot bigger than that. Uh, but yet you say um, how it's being. 
uh, used against the, to hurt uh, one particular uh, race more than the other. So that's, that's something that we need to revisit, don't you think? Yeah, that, well, that's what I'm saying. It, it's bigger than just saying a stand your ground law. I mean, it, when, and when I say bigger than that, uh, you look at the jury selection and you say, well, why didn't it, the, the jury look like the community or mm -hmm. um, or a oh. representation of the community? But to get on the jury, first, first of all, you have to want to be on the jury. Mm -hmm. And, and I, hear, I hear so many of my friends and and family members. Oh, I got jury duty. Oh, I, how can I get out of this? Mm -hmm. Well, well, that's that's the issue right there. And then the second part of it is, in order to be on a jury, you have to be a registered voter. So, mm -hmm. so we, we have a whole lot of issues with our legal system that we complain about. But if we're not doing the first step of getting registered to vote, and then being willing to participate on juries elections we're just screaming for no reason right right and i and i I'm recalling that case uh the very first day the uh, zimmerman's lawyer made tried to make a knock knock joke about who's there and the only people that could be on the jury was the people who were not aware of who george zimmerman was and that uh, it's hard for me to believe that in this day and time where there's so much technology out uh, that nobody has heard of this case before, didn't have some kind of altered views already about going into it to be a jury. And, you know, uh, in Sanford County or in Florida in itself, it's hard for me to understand that no African-Americans was on this trial or one day say it was. They did. They wouldn't release the information. However, they rele released the information of the. They said five white women and one other disclosed. They wouldn't say if she was Hispanic, African American. We all we all know that race is a factor. Race is the elephant in the room, and that's why it's important for us to dialogue and talk about it, so we can overcome certain things. Uh, however, I highly doubt this was an African American woman, but uh, many felt that. Uh, by being an all-woman panel, they would sympathize or empathize with uh, Trayvon Martin's mother. Uh, and listening to one of the jurors right after the trial mm -hmm. on CNN, she already kind of specified she had a preconceived notion. So that lets me know that she knew uh, more about the case going in. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's all about education. It's all about teaching about legal system, you know, helping our young people understand what's really going mm -hmm. on. You know, not not necessarily about race, but just a, a legal system. Period. How it works. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and and like and like Fred said, um, um, for you to even be on a jury, you have to be a registered voter, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, that's also a good point he brought up. Right, right, right. So, right. all right. Well, Fred, we thank you for your call and comment this morning. Uh, <clears throat> we are talking about different things this morning the George Zimmerman case it's approaching the one month anniversary uh, I do have a special guest in this morning with me Ryan McCray of the Child Protective Services who's giving us a brief description of what you can do if you want to be a uh, foster parent or certain things that it take to get uh, in uh, to be foster parents as well as assisting with anything that they may need uh, I think the website you gave earlier if you're interested in being a foster parent is DFPS Yes, dot org. Yeah, go on that, and it should be some some information and some some tools to, you know, to help parenting skills. Mm -hmm. uh, period. So you won't have to be in that situation. So those of you who are uh, looking forward to becoming a foster parent, hey, log on and help these children. Uh, you know, uh, I grew up listening to people always saying, you know, you're our future, you're our future. So mm -hmm. make sure you're doing your due diligence and uh, uh, putting the right influence into our youth. We have so many. It's a multitude of. Uh, children that are uh, being falsely advised, uh, being led in the wrong direction. So we, we, on our next break, we're going to talk about that a little bit. And make sure you're calling in your tax-deductible pledges this morning, all right? Uh, that number is 972-647-1893, 972-647-1893. We're up against a short break. When we come back, get your uh, pens and pe paper ready. We got George, Greg, Barbara coming back with the uh, job line when we come back. Again, that number is 972-647-1893. I am Marion Barnett, your host this morning, and this is Church Information in Open Forum. You are listening to KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas, Fort Worth. Pledge now. Call 972-647-1893 now to make your pledge.
Concealed handgun license classes are available from Total Precision Shooting. Total Precision Concealed Handgun Licensing offers training for new concealed handgun licenses, renewal of existing handgun licenses, and skilled marksmanship shooting. For more information, 214-395-6852 or on the web at TotalPrecisionShooting.com. KNON thanks Total Precision Shooting for their support of Church and Information Forum with Marion Barnett. Heard every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. on 89.3 FM. Concealed handgun license classes are available now. TotalPrecisionShooting.com or 214-395-6852 for more information. This is William, your videographer for the KNON Talk Shows. You can watch Church Information and Forum by going to the KNON.org website. Click on Schedules to the left side of your screen. Choose Church Information and Forum's page. Scroll to the bottom of that page, then choose your favorite show to watch or download. This show will be ready for viewing by lunchtime Tuesday. Have a great day. Hey, I appreciate you guys. And remember, go ahead and call in to 972-647-1893-KNON.org. Thank you so much for all your support. And guess what? The best is yet to come, people. The best is yet to come. And we want to thank you right here. And I want to thank my staff this morning. They have been awesome. I got two fine-looking young men here. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Church Information and Open Forum. I am Marion Burnett Jr., your host, hosting this morning. Uh, we got a, we've been talking about a lot this morning, Trayvon Martin situation. Since it's one uh, one month is approaching of the decision, also I uh, have a special guest, Ryan McCray, in the building with me this morning, who's uh, talking about uh, child protective services. If you're interested in becoming a uh, foster parent, and uh, he can give you the website and certain tools you need to go to become a foster member uh also this is the tax deductible pledge season so make sure you're calling in like tony morris did and make your tax deductible pledge uh tony morris called in this morning gave his tax deductible pledge we want to say thank you tony for calling your tax deductible pledge in this is one of the few stations that in the only one that i know of that where you can where your voice is heard uh, this is the the logo is of the voice of the people so you can call and come in and make your voice heard all right uh, you'll be around people that are, are are wise beyond their years who have many suggestions who can uh, uh, guide you in the right way uh, I always feel like my father has one of the best listening shows the, the listening audiences uh, in the area uh, you got to be a special person to get up at 7 in the morning and listen to the show. So you got to be in tune with what you're talking about. All right. Uh, even if you're not, if you happen to just turn the station and you flipped it on, take time to listen. Uh, it might be something educational you can learn. So make sure you're calling in your tax deductible pledge. Uh, this, in order to keep this show on, you have to make pledge. This money does not go to any of the the people who are doing the show. So it helps you, that person stay on the air. It does cost money to, to keep the station going. So make sure you're calling that tax to the pledge in. That number is 972-647-1893. 972-647-1893. There's a lot of items to give away. Uh, you don't have to pay it right now. They'll give you three months to pay it. So you can set, call up here and set up a payment plan. But make sure your voice is heard. Also, give us a call and uh, just uh, give us your call and comment this morning. Uh, hopefully, you got your pen and paper ready this morning because we're going to the phone line and saying good morning to Greg Barber. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing fine. Good, you guys good, got good. a show this morning. Doing good. this morning. The topics, the comments, all the way around. Oh, thank yes, you, sir. thank you, Greg. Uh, are there any jobs out there? There are some jobs I heard this morning on our SAT job line. That's solutions and actions today job line. Brought to you every Saturday morning during church information and open forum here on KNON eighty nine point three, the voice of the people. This morning on the job line we have UT Southwestern. Medical Center is looking for a customer service representative. They're asking you to apply online at www.jobapplication, the number two, dot S-W-M-E-D dot O-R-G. Once again, that's UT Southwestern Medical Center is looking for a customer service representative. They're asking you to apply online at www.jobapplication, the number two, dot S-W-M-E-D dot O-R-G. 
Toyota rental cars look for customer service representatives. They're asking you to apply online at www.apply, the number two jobs.com backslash F R I E D K I N. Once again, that's Toyota rental cars looking for a customer service representative. They're asking you to apply online at www.apply, the number two jobs.com backslash F R I E D K I N. R.W. Smith and Company is looking for warehouse personnel. They're asking you to apply online at www.rwsmithcoco.com. Once again, that web address is R.W. Smith and Company is looking for warehouse personnel. They're asking you to apply online at www.rwsmithco.com. U.R.S. Federal is looking for production co- control clerks. They're asking you to apply online at www.urs.apply, the number two jobs.com. Once again, that web address is www.urs.apply, the number two jobs.com. Pajoka Corporation is looking for a receiving clerk. They're asking you to apply online at www.hoj, I mean, h-a-j-o-c-a, c-a-r-e-e-r-s dot SilkRoad.com. Once again, that web address is www.hajokacareers, H-A-J-O-C-A, careers, C-A-R-E-E-R-S, dot SilkRoad, S-I-L-K-R-O-A-D.com. If you are a child-loving, patient, and energetic individual and would like to work in the daycare setting, the number for inquiry is 972-290-4995. Once again, if you are a child-loving patient, an energetic individual, and would like to work in a daycare setting, the number for inquiry is 972-290-4995. If you are a person affected by addiction and need assistance with your recovery efforts or an ex-offender trying to make their transition back to the Main Street Society and need assistance with job search, the number for inquiry is 214-634-2722. Once again, if you are a person affected by addiction and need assistance with your recovery efforts or an ex-offender trying to make the transition back in the mainstream society and need assistance with job searches, the number for inquiry is 214-634-2722. Today is a good day if you're looking for a job to find one. Let me repeat that. Today is a good day if you're looking for a job to find one. Today is also a great day to make the to church information and open form and follow through with. Today is always a great day to make a place to church information an open form and follow through with it. Just to make a few comments, if I will, if I can. Uh, oh, go ahead. Um, um, Any time in the Bible, the Lord sent someone far off. He sent them off for a reason and prepared them. And most, and almost all of the time, if not all of the time, He prepared them to do what? Go back to where they came mm-hmm. from to make it better for the folks who were there. Mm-hmm. We 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 must learn to go back to where we came from. Oftentimes that's what's wrong with our that's that's what's wrong with our communities now. That's what's wrong with our family now. We are dispersed. We are detached. We have no attachment. God uh, the Holy Spirit took Ezekiel down in the valley of dry bones and he said, Can these bones get filled? And Ezekiel told him, You know, Lord, he said, Well if I know then you prophesy, start prophesying to these bones, and you saw the bones start connecting, the foot bones start connecting with the ankle bone, and the ankle bone start connecting with the knee bone, I'm, and the knee bone start connecting with the thigh bone. To make a long story short, see, if we go back, first of all, it starts with the family. Our families are detached. They're dispersed. If we put our families back together, we start doing what we need to do in our families, and we get our families back together, then we start to rebuild our communities. If we get our communities, family and communities back together, then our churches will be strong and back together. If we get our family, our community, and our churches back together, then we'll put our cities back together. Hmm, that's good. If we get our cities back together, then we'll put our states back together. And if we get our states back together, then we'll put our country back together. That's how that works. But the whole building block, the only start with the family. My mm-hmm. biggest George Zimmerman case is you have an unarmed kid and an armed, full-grown man, and a grown man starts the confrontation. Yes, I understand the laws, but I don't want to get sidetracked on that. My thing is, how did this happen? An unarmed kid is a conflict is initiated by a grown, armed man. The unarmed kid winds up dead 
and they say that's justified by they say I don't see that with the laws that's on the books how that's justified. Mm. You can't tell me, but see, we keep revisiting. We, we 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 say we've gone so far, but the world is round; it's not flat. So if mm. you even if you make great progress, you are by by definition of a circle, you gonna come right back, back to around. The same spot. So yeah. that case is nothing more than what that being is re that 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 reinvigorated the Dred Scott decision. Mm. Now I around when that happened. You wasn't around, but we know the history of it. Mm-hmm. And what the Dred Scott decision said is black folk have no rights that the Anglos have to respect. That's, That's right. what they say. And see, with the school system, we're revisiting. They're pushing charters and private. Understand this. Public school system, if you live in that district, they cannot deny you going to that school. But charters and privates get to pick and choose who they want. So if we scrap the public system for the charters and private, what we're setting up is they will have theirs, we'll have ours. We are voluntarily walking right back into Tessie versus, Tessie versus Ferguson, Ferguson, which is mm-hmm. separate, but e- separate but equal. We're revisiting these cases and people don't even see it. That's, that's the crime of the thing. And the young man, I believe it was Fred, came on and said, well, yeah, we don't, we don't try to get on juries. Yes, that's true for some. That's not true for myself. I'm one of those, as soon as they see me, the one of those you can X out without a reason. Mm-hmm. I was a guy in Dallas County. Now, you're going to love this, and then I'm, I'm going to end and let one else know. This guy got his case tossed out. This missed because he said the jury did not consist of his peers. Hmm. He said it was not any black folk on the jury. Wow. But he got his, his mess. But wait, oh no, it gets better than that. The guy was white. Yeah, I figured that's where you was going. <laughs> the guy was white. <laughs> he was white. Now, for any legal scholar out there, find me one white person that's been tried by an all black jury. Please. Hmm. Find me one. Dig deep. But how is it that we're not good enough to try them, but they are, hey, that's what they want with us? Yeah. That's what they seem to find with us and have no problem with it. Mm-hmm. Have no problem with it. For black males, if you've ever been reproached by law enforcement and you you know you're not in a threatening position, you're not brandishing a weapon, and he has his hand on the gun, welcome to the Trayvon Martin case. Right. Exactly. You've, been stopped, you've been stopped by the law, and he walks up, and he automatically has his hand on the gun. Welcome to the Trayvon Martin case. Right, right, right. We have to wake up and see it for what it is. Mm-hmm. For as much progress as we believe we've made, we've also come back and we got to re- we revisiting the, the 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 issues of old. They haven't gone away. Our folks need to wake up. Mm-hmm. We have a nation. Just because we got a man in the White House, don't mean we can shout our troubles over and we done made it. No, no, no. The struggle continues. The struggle continues. And we got to realize that. All if right. you not get up, if you get up, my last statement, if you get up in the morning and you're not ready to fight, and I'm not talking about literally ball up your fist and go hit somebody. I'm talking about fight for the rights of folk, of your rights, and folk that look like you, equal access, then go back to sleep. And with that, I bring the SAT job line to a close. Well, thank you, Greg Barber, for your call and comment. It's always enlightening talking to you. All right, let's go back to our phone lines and let's say good morning. Good morning to Cash on line two. Good morning, Cash. Good morning. How you doing there this morning, though? Doing just fine, sir. All right, that, that general right there with that guy through talking. Mm hmm. Boy, he, hey, he said a mouthful. I'm talking about he, all that good stuff he got. He's talking about right there. Mm-hmm. If, if anybody take that right there and walk with it and live by it day by day, the world will be a better place. But you got a few that will and a few that won't. A few want to and a few who don't want to. So it's going to stay confused and screwed up just like that for, until the end of the time. Yeah, it just seems like the don'ts are the ones that uh, are, are is, they outnumber the ones that do. That's right. And just like that Joe Zimmerman situation, he didn't jump in and ride around out here in Texas. He pulled over by the police, 
and they found out that's who he is. And he got a gun, a loaded gun in the car with him, found out who he is, gave him the gun back, let and him tell go. him to have a good day and let mm -hmm. him keep on going down the road. And the, these suckers want to take a picture with him just like he's a, a real star. Mm -hmm. Take a picture with him. Now, what kind of mess is that? Now, you mm -hmm. show me what uh, that good folks right there. They, 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 they were still fine, and he, he did a fine job by killing that boy. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the next thing, that, that first jury was the interview. She said right there and told the people, say, she know George Zimmerman because she called him Georgie. But she know him. She mm -hmm. said she know George Zimmerman, but she didn't know Trayvon Martin. Right. And she, you, anytime you're going to serve on the jury, you can't know that person. But mm -hmm. they let it went on through. She mm -hmm. know him. And they still let that, let that case went forward with that woman on the jury. And then the next thing, if Trayvon Martin would have been white and George Zimmerman been black, it would have been the same thing. Trayvon Martin would have walked out the courtroom. The same thing Julie Zimmer did. With nothing wrong. But that's the way it goes. They bring dirty food out there. And then the next thing is this right here. That jury, every time they have a black man on trial, they always got the jury stacked for him. Mm -hmm. No black folks on the jury. But when they have a white, white trial, look at it. They, you, you, they might stick around there and stick one black person on the jury. And the rest of them be white, and guess what's gonna happen like that? He gonna walk out anyway, because the deck is already stacked against him. Right. All right. Well, thank you for your calling, coming, Cash. Thank you for your calling, coming. All right. Uh, there was some very enlightening uh calls there from uh brother greg broadway and uh brother cash uh we live in a time where hey if you're not gonna wake up and stand up like greg barber said go back to sleep <laughs> if you're not gonna wake up and stand up right. go back to sleep all right um there's a couple of things i want to talk about before we get out of here uh the remember the tax deductible pledge drive is going on right now in order for this station this uh segment to stay on you must call in your tax deductible pledges i want to thank T tony morris for calling in today and, and uh giving his tax deductible pledge uh make sure you're calling in your tax deductible pledge also uh it's back to school season and there are some things on the agenda uh omega Psi, the ada lambda lambda chapter of omega Psi Phi fraternity incorporated is actually hosting an event next saturday for back to school supplies if your children need back to school supplies make sure you're at the ymca in dallas texas off of hampton road uh for more information the number to call is 214-497-9969 214-497-9969 and uh i have a special guest in the building ryan mccray who's uh came in talked to briefly about the uh, uh child protective services right. also uh you have a, a event coming up soon am i am i right yeah well uh, we both have a couple of events coming on yeah we do uh uh on august 29th you know that's uh mega fest weekend mm -hmm. in the part of house uh our chapter and a couple more chapters are going to get involved with a little showcase mm -hmm. uh, that morning. Well, I'm sorry, that evening. Um, so if you don't have your tickets, go out and get them for Mega Fest for Manpower. Uh, There's going to be a little showcase going on with uh, or with Omega Sci Fi, a little showcase for about about two minutes. So, so come out and check us out. Also, um, August 30th, mm -hmm. uh, Ada Atlanta, Ada Atlanta, Atlanta chapter of Mega Sci Fi Incorporated will have a jazz on the keynote, a cool and classy event. Um, it's going to be live jazz with uh, Lakeisha LaCole and company from 7 to 9. And old school R&B with DJ Don Juan from 9 to midnight. Mm -hmm. uh, free buffet and uh, two drinks. $2 raffle tickets. Shopping spree. It's going to be at Winfrey Park. Right. So come on, check us out. And that number to call also, if you want more information about jazz on the Q note, it's 214-497-9969 as well. 214-497-9969. That is jazz on the Q note and Megafest. Megafest, August 29th. Uh, jazz on the Q note. That's at Winifred Park and uh, on August 30th, Friday. So if you don't have anything to do, come out. It's a very cool and classy event. 214-497-9969. 9969 is the number to call for the information. I am Marion Barnett, your host this morning. I want to say a special thank you to all the callers who called in. A special thank you to my guest, Ryan McCray, for uh, participating with me on this no show problem, this morning. No Remember to call in your tax deductible pledge. Uh, and if you're not going to wake up and stand up, go back to sleep. And that is our show this morning. KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people.
business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. 